G'day kids and grown-ups. If you are loving watching and learning with Aussie, it would be amazing if you could please do me a really big favour and just tell anybody else that you think might enjoy it too. In the meantime, enjoy this brand new episode and as always, stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi! Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, it's Ozzy here, and it's Christmas time, the most wonderful time of the year. So let's enjoy a good book together on Storytime with Ozzy. This one's called Christmas Around the World. And it's by Leslie Sims and Angelo Rutter. Let's learn about Christmas around the world. It's the night before Christmas, Everyone is fast asleep waiting for the magic to begin. Cards are written and sent, presents are wrapped and waiting under the tree. How exciting. Stockings hang empty from the mantelpiece while children dream of a secret visitor and a sack bursting with surprises. Who could that secret visitor be, I wonder? Santa Claus. Could be. People have been enjoying Christmas for over 2,000 years. Early Christians started it to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, a small town in the Middle East. His parents, Mary and Joseph, were visiting the town, but every inn was full, so Jesus was born in a stable. A stable is where the horses sleep. A star shone brightly overhead to show everyone where he was. Excited shepherds working in nearby fields came to see him. Then three wise kings arrived from far off lands to worship him and they all brought presents. Now Christians go to church on Christmas Day to remember Jesus' birth, but millions of others celebrate too. Early in December, the streets sparkle with lights. Christmas is coming. The four weeks leading up to Christmas are known as Advent. An Advent calendar counts down the days from December 1st to Christmas Day on December 25th. This is an Advent calendar. Have you ever had an Advent calendar? You open a new window each day find something in there. It might be a little surprise, a little toy or a chocolate or something. The Sunday before Advent used to be called Stir Up Sunday because it was the day people made Christmas puddings. Everyone stirred the pudding and made a wish. Have you ever done that at home? Today, most people buy their Christmas puddings, but they still decorate their homes with flickering candles and holly, just as people did hundreds of years ago. Then they add strands of glittering silver tinsel and put up twinkling Christmas lights. Some people hang up mistletoe too, first used by the Celts over 2,000 years ago. The Celts thought it was a magical plant of love, so today we kiss under it. And front doors display wreaths woven with leaves and shiny balls. Oh, so exciting. Do you love Christmas too? In Germany, Christmas markets are set up for people to buy decorations. A Christmas market is called Weihnachtsmarkt. That's Aussie's attempt at a German word, which is very difficult to say when you don't speak German. But Weihnachtsmarkt is the Christmas market. Some of the stalls sell Christmas cookies for people to eat while they shop and hot spicy drinks to keep them warm. Yum yum. The Christmas markets are outside, in the snow. That would be fun, wouldn't it? The brightest decoration in every home is a sparkling tree, topped with a fairy, a star, or a Christmas angel. Does your Christmas tree look something like that? 
The first Christmas trees hung in Eastern Europe upside down. An old legend says the idea to decorate them came from Martin Luther, a German priest. One night he saw stars twinkling through the trees. Back at home, he lit up his tree with candles. There you go. Now, all over the world, people decorate their trees. The American president switches on the lights of a tree outside the White House. Where the president lives in America, it's called the White House. This is a big tree and he turns the lights on. And a giant tree shines out in Trafalgar Square in London. A gift to Britain from Norway. How cool is that tree? That's in London. Piles of presents. Gifts have been part of Christmas ever since the kings and shepherds brought presents for Jesus. Families and friends buy each other presents, but other people will bring them too. Long ago in Turkey, there lived a bishop named Nicholas. Nicholas loved to give children presents and help the poor. He was such a good man, he became Saint Nicholas. Today he's known as Santa Claus or Father Christmas. There he is, it's Father Christmas. Some say that Santa Claus lives at the North Pole or in Lapland, which is nearby. There he is. Every year, millions of children send him letters saying what they'd like in their stockings for Christmas. Santa packs his bulging sack and sets off in his sleigh, pulled by nine flying reindeer. Big, strong reindeer. They'd have to be to pull that sleigh, wouldn't they? Look at the presents. Wow. I wonder if you've been a good little boy or girl and one of those presents is for you. Maybe. Santa isn't the only person to bring presents at Christmas. Italian children wait for La Befana, a kind old witch. She didn't join the kings to visit Jesus because she had to sweep her house. Now she searches for the baby every Christmas, leaving presents as she goes. In Sweden, children leave out a bowl of porridge for the Tomte, a gnome who lives under the floorboards. Children in Syria leave out hay for the three king's youngest camel. In the morning, the hay has vanished and presents are there instead. So people around the world celebrate Christmas different. In Germany, children write letters to a Christmas angel called the Christkind, asking him to leave their presents under the tree. People open their presents at different times too. In Holland, the paper is torn off on St. Nicholas's Day, which is December the 6th. In Scandinavia and Germany, Christmas Eve is the big night. Then Christmas morning is free for church and visiting friends. But in Britain, Australia, the United States, and many other countries, everyone has to wait for Christmas Day. You know what date Christmas Day is? The 25th of December. That's what we celebrate in Australia. For hundreds of years, presents came without cards, until in 1843, an artist named John Calcott Horsley invented the first ever Christmas card. Now, more than 10,000 million Christmas cards are sent every year. That's a lot of Christmas cards. And look, you say Merry Christmas in all different ways, in different languages, of course. So I'm gonna give it a go. Japan, they say, Shinen Omidato. Brazil, they say, Feliz Natal. In Denmark, they say, Gladlig Jul. And in East Africa, they say, Harry Ya Christmasy. Or something like that. My accent is not quite right. I don't really know how to speak these languages. So, but I had to try. For most people, Christmas is a holiday. With the presents unwrapped and all the food eaten, they can do whatever they like best, which may be going for a winter walk, playing games, or snoozing in front of the TV. In Alaska, children run through the streets carrying a star on a pole. Everyone else tries to steal the star. That looks like a fun game, doesn't it? Mexican children try to smash a piñata, a clay container. 
As it breaks, tiny presents tumble out. And all over the world, people go carol singing. They gather in the street or walk from house to house singing Christmas songs and collecting money for charity. Carols are full of hope, telling listeners to be kind, just like Jesus. The first carols began as jolly Christmas dances in Italy nearly 1,000 years ago. The dancers started singing along and carols were born. Christmas lasts for 12 days. There's even a song about it with presents for each day. Have you heard the song? On the first day of Christmas my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. And so it goes. January 6th is Epiphany. This celebrates the day the kings came to see Jesus, so some countries call it Three Kings Day. People eat king's cake and give each other gifts and then Christmas is truly over. So there you go, so many fun facts about different ways people celebrate Christmas all around the world. Now I'm sure that the way I celebrate Christmas might be different to the way you celebrate it wherever you might live. But however you celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a really good time doing it this year with all your family and loved ones and friends. And hopefully, you get to spoil each other with lots of presents, lots of hugs, and lots of laughter. We'll see you again on another Aussie episode very soon. But until then, Merry Christmas and stay keen. G'day kids, Aussie here. Now just because it's Christmas, we've got a very special treat for you. We've got another book, and this one's based on a classic called The Night Before Christmas. But this one is an Aussie night before Christmas, and it's a lot of fun. So let's get into it. An Aussie Night Before Christmas, adapted by Yvonne Morrison and illustrated by Kilmeny Nyland. 'Twas the night before Christmas, there wasn't a sound. Not a possum was stirring, no one was around. We'd left on the table some tucker and beer, hoping that Santa Claus would soon be here. We children were snuggled up safe in our beds, while dreams of pavlova dance round in our heads. Pavlova is an Aussie dessert that a lot of people eat on Christmas Day. It's really yummy. And Mum in her nighty and Dad in his shorts had just settled down to watch TV sports. When outside the house, a mad ruckus arose. Loud squeaking and banging woke us from our doze. We ran to the screen door, peeked cautiously out, snuck onto the deck, then let out a shout. What had woken them? Let's find out. Guess what had woken us up from our snooze? But a rusty old ute pulled by eight mighty roos. The cheerful man driving was giggling with glee, and we both knew at once who this plump bloke must be. Who could it possibly be on Christmas Eve? Santa? Now I'm telling the truth, it's all dinky die. Those eight kangaroos fairly soared through the sky. Wow, look at these kangaroos and they're pulling. That's not a sleigh, that's a rusty old ute. And is that Santa driving the ute? With a dog in the background. How Aussie is that? Santa leaned out the window to pull at the reins and encourage the roos by calling their names. What are they called? Now Kylie, now Kirsty, now Shazza and Shane. On Kipper, on Skipper, on Bazza and Wayne. Park up on that water tank, grab a quick drink. I'll scoot down the gum tree, be back in a wink. That's a pretty Aussie sounding Santa, isn't it? And a pretty Aussie looking Santa too. So up to the tank those eight kangaroos flew with the ute full of toys and Santa Claus too. He slid down the gum tree and jumped to the ground. Then in through the window, he sprang with a bound. He had bright sunburnt cheeks and a milky white beard. A jolly old joker was how he appeared. He wore red stubby shorts and old thongs on his feet. 
and a hat of deep crimson as shade from the heat. What a jolly old fella he looks like, this Aussie Santa. His eyes bright as opals, oh how they twinkled. And like a goanna, his skin was quite wrinkled. His shirt was stretched over a round bulging belly, which shook when he moved like a plate full of jelly. And look, he's eating lamingtons. And that is a really traditional Aussie treat. And they are very, very tasty. A fat sack of prezzies he flung from his back and he looked like a swaggy unfastening his pack. He spoke not a word, but bent down on one knee to position our goodies beneath the Yule tree. There he is over there. Surfboard and footy ball shapes for us too. And for dad, tongs to use on the new barbecue. A mysterious package he left for our mum. Then he turned and he winked and he held up his thumb. He strolled on deck and his ruse came on cue, flung his sack in the back and prepared to shoot through. He bellowed out loud as they swooped past the gates. Merry Christmas to all and good on you mates. How good is that? I don't really think Santa is pulled in a ute by a bunch of kangaroos, but it's good fun, isn't it? Lots of Australian things in there. Kids, I hope you enjoyed it. Good fun. I hope you have a really, really good Christmas. I hope you've been good so Santa visits you. We'll see you on our next video. And until then, stay keen and Merry Christmas. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now I reckon a lot of you know the words to the Christmas Carol Jingle Bells. But do you know the words or the lyrics to the Christmas Carol and Ozzy Jingle Bells? This one is super fun. Let's sing it or read it together. Aussie Jingle Bells by Colin Buchanan and Nick Bland. Let's see how many Aussie icons that you can find as we go through the book. Dashing through the bush in a rusty holden ute, kicking up the dust, esky in the boot. This is fun. Kelpie by my side, singing Christmas songs. It's summertime and I'm in my singlet shorts and thongs. And the Kelpie is the dog next to the driver. And there is an Aussie bird. That is the cockatoo. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Christmas in Australia on a scorching summer's day. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is beaut'. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a rusty holden ute. Engine's getting hot, we dodge the kangaroos. The swaggy climbs aboard, he is welcome too. All the family's there, sitting by the pool. Christmas Day the Aussie way by the barbecue. Because that's what we do in Australia at Christmas time. It's hot, isn't it? So we often have barbecues and swim and play outside, play cricket and do lots of fun things outside. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Christmas in Australia on a scorching summer's day. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is beaut. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a rusty Holden ute. Did you join me on that one? Come the afternoon, Grandpa has a doze. The kids and Uncle Bruce are swimming in their clothes. The time comes round to go. We take a family snap, pack the car and all shoot through before the washing up. Oh, join with me. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Christmas in Australia on a scorching summer's day. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is beaut. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a rusty Holden ute. How fun is that book? What an awesome version of Jingle Bells. And look at these two Aussie koalas 
cracking the bonbon. How much fun. Kids, I reckon you should watch that through again and learn those words. Before you know it, you'll be walking around singing the Aussie Jingle Bells. Kids, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great festive season. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you all, to all your families. Be safe. Enjoy spending time together. Enjoy watching Aussie. And we'll see you on the next video. Until then, stay keen. G'day kids, Ozzy yeah. here. Merry Christmas. Now one of my favorite things to do at any time of the year is watch my favorite show, which is Bluey, but they've got an awesome Christmas book and we're gonna read that together today. It's called Bluey, Veranda Santa. Sit back kids and enjoy this one, it's awesome. It's Christmas Eve and Bluey's whole family has gathered at the Healer House. Everyone's already had dinner, which means it's nearly time for Santa to come. Bluey is bursting with excitement. She can't wait to open the presents that are already under the tree. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no peeking at those presents, warns Dad. Why not? asks Bluey. Because Santa doesn't give presents to naughty kids, says Dad. Muffin wants to know how Santa gets in when there's no chimney. Maybe he uses the veranda suggests Bluey. Bingo bursts out from behind the presents. Let's play Veranda Santa. Yeah. Muffin jumps off the chair and lands on her dad's belly. Muffin, quick, you have to say sorry, says Bingo. Santa's watching, reminds Bluey. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Now it's time to play the game. Bluey suggests dad can be Veranda Santa and the kids rush into bed and pretend to be asleep. Okay, it's Christmas in the morning. Remember, no peeking or no presents, calls Dad as he walks out the door. Dad tiptoes across the veranda and into the room. Bingo giggles with excitement and Bluey opens one eye. Was that a peek? asks Dad. Bluey shuts her eye and shakes her head. It wasn't a peek. Ho, ho and ho says Dad as he slips the presents under the pillows. That's Dad, he's playing Santa. It's morning. Veranda Santa has left something under everyone's pillow. Hooray, cry the kids. I got a snow globe. I got shaving cream. I got a pencil case. Hey, that's my pencil case, yells Bingo, snatching it from Bluey. Yeah, but it's Bluey's for the game says Dad. She'll give it back after. Bingo apologises, but Bluey doesn't want to accept her sorry. Why should I? asks Bluey. Because Santa won't bring you any presents, explains Bingo. Santa likes children who accept sorries. Okay, fine, says Bluey, and takes the pencil case. Now it's Bluey's turn to be Veranda Santa. She grabs the hat and walks to the door. Night night kids, no peeking or no presents. We won't, they chorus from the bed. Bluey tiptoes across the veranda and into the room. She reaches the bed and ho ho ho! Look, she shouted so loud that they all woke up. Naughty children, you peeked at Santa, she scolds. No presents for you, I'm going to throw these in the bin. Bluey walks away, but the trio jump out of bed to protest. Look, they're all saying, please, we want presents. Muffin, Bingo and Dad all put on their very best please faces. We're sorry, Santa, says Bingo. Please, will you accept our sorry? Asks Dad. Hmm, Bluey thinks for a moment, then decides she will. I'm sure I'm a very nice child, says Bluey. If I were the real Santa, I'd give me lots of presents. It's Bingo's turn now, and Socks rushes in to be her helper. As Bingo goes to hand out the presents, Dad scoops her up. Oh, my teddy bear! Bluey copies Dad and picks up Socks, but Socks is frightened and nips Bluey. Ruff! Socks bit me, yells Bluey. Dad explains to Socks that it's not nice to bite people, but that's not enough for Bluey. She's not even saying sorry, cries Bluey. Dad shakes his head. Socks is only one 
and doesn't know any better. Let's keep playing. Fine. Bluey's not very happy, is she? Bluey tiptoes across the veranda and into the room. She creeps across the bed, avoiding grubby hands, to deliver the presents. Ho, 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 and no. Bluey yells, Christmas! Everyone looks under their pillow for a present. I got underpants. I got one of these. I got baked beans. But there is nothing under Socks' pillow. Bluey, scolds Dad as Socks runs from the room. But she bit me and didn't say sorry, huffs Bluey. Afterwards, Mum and Dad find Bluey in the lounge room. Bluey, I think you should say sorry to Socks. I was teaching her that Santa doesn't give you presents if you're not nice, declares Bluey. That's not the reason to be nice to people, explains Mum. Then what is the reason? asks Bluey. Mum and Dad show Bluey that Socks is sitting outside on her own, crying. Oh, poor Socks. Imagine if Socks did to you what you did to her, says Dad. Bluey looks at Socks and thinks. She realises she would be sad too. Hi Socks, I'm sorry I didn't give you any presents. I was mad because you didn't say sorry, says Bluey. Socks gives Bluey a lick, accepting the sorry in her own way. There's time for one last game of Veranda Santa. Okay, night kids, remember, no peeking or no presents, says Dad as he goes to the door. Dad tiptoes across the veranda and into the room. Ho, 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 no! Get him! <laughs> Everyone's tackled him and hitting him with pillows. They'll be lots of fun together, aren't they? There you go, kids, another great book, and Bluey is awesome. There's always some good lessons and learnings in Bluey, isn't there? This one, you have gotta make sure that you treat people with kindness and treat them the way you wanna be treated. Kids, I hope you love this book today. We'll see you in our next video. Until then, stay keen and Merry Christmas. G'day kids, Aussie here. Now I love reading books at Christmas time and we have some awesome books here in Australia. This one is called A Very Wombat Christmas because we know that a wombat is a native animal in Australia, isn't it? it belongs here in Australia. So let's read what this little wombat gets up to at Christmas time. A Very Wombat Christmas, it's illustrated by Lachlan Cray. Tis the night before Christmas and deep in his burrow, Wombat is busy getting ready for tomorrow. Look, he's hanging all his decorations. The stockings are hung by the campfire with care in hope the bush Santa soon will be there. Look at all the other Aussie animals. What can you spot, kids? Wombat has lots of work to get done to make sure his mates have loads of Christmas fun. He's made a Christmas pudding with lots of nuts and fruit. It's Nana Wombat's recipe. It always tastes beaut. Look, do you think that's Nana Wombat? I think it could be. He's made decorations and hung them from a tree. A sparkly Christmas ghost gum, as tall as can be. That type of tree is called a ghost gum. Then Wombat wraps the presents and checks them off his list. Croc, Koala, Goanna, Roo. Oh no, there's one he's missed. No present for Emu. He can't believe he forgot. What can he do? It's too late for the shops. Wombat looks high and low for a gift he can share. It's got to be special to show Emu that he cares. Look, he's searching everywhere. What can he give Emu? There's not enough time to knit Emu a scarf. He can't think of a story that might make him laugh. He tries to paint a picture, but comes out all splodgy. 
His homemade candy cane looks a bit dodgy. The wombat says, I've got it. The perfect prezzy idea. I'll do nice things for emu all through the year. He writes them in a list and signs it with his paw. This special Christmas present should make emu smile for sure. And Wombat declares as he snuggles in tight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And look, who's that? That's Wombat and Emu having a big hug. Lots of fun. Kids, you just see lots of Aussie animals in there. We saw Wombat, Emu, Crocodile. Did you see a kangaroo and a koala? Yeah. They're all in there and make sure if you didn't see them, you can go back and spot them. Lots of cool animals all having a Christmas together. And what a great little problem solver Wombat is. Hey, he didn't have a present, but he thought hard. He came up with a really good idea to give presents to Emu all throughout the year. I love it. Kids, I hope you enjoyed that book. Hope you have a great Christmas. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay keen. G'day kids, Aussie here. How fun is Christmas? That visit to Santa and that high tea with the big man himself, that was pretty special, wasn't it? And how good is the QVB and that giant Christmas tree? So, so cool. Now, speaking of cool, we've got an awesome book. It's one of my favorites. It's called Santa's Aussie Holiday. Let's get stuck in. Santa's Aussie Holiday by Maria Farah and Anna Walker. The Arctic's cold with ice and snow. And that's where Santa lives, you know. On Christmas Eve, he flies so fast, we rarely see him whizzing past. But he keeps a lookout on his way for a place to take his holiday. Because Santa needs a holiday too, doesn't he? He works so hard. Each year, he likes to have some fun, a chance to get some rest and sun. He spins his globe for inspiration and finds a perfect destination. A smile spreads across his face. Where's he going? Australia is the perfect place. He packs his bag, his surfboard too, and lands his sleigh at Australia Zoo. He leaves his reindeer in the care of friendly locals who live there. Look, who's the friendly locals? Look at all these Australian animals. How cool! He hires a ute and takes a ride to town to buy a tourist guide. A t-shirt, thongs and a bushman's hat, stubbies and Aussie things like that. He heads to Fraser Island first. The heat, it gives him quite a thirst. He cools off in the champagne pools and learns about the dingo rules. There he is, kicking back in the water. And after going four-wheel driving, he heads up north for scuba diving. He dives around the barrier reef and meets a shark with long, sharp teeth. But he's a friendly shark, isn't he? That's lucky for Santa. He drives across the desert sands to where magnificent Uluru stands. That's the name of that big, big rock. And watches till the day is through, then leaves to visit. Where's he going? Kakadu. The crocodiles, they make him shiver. And he cruises up the Yellow River. But the ancient art of the Aboriginal, he finds both interesting and original. How cool is that Aboriginal art? That's probably from thousands and thousands of years ago, isn't it? In Albany, he watches whales and walks along the forest trails. He meets the quokkas on Rotnest before he turns to leave the west. These little things, they're called quokkas and they're only found on Rotnest Island over in Western Australia. How cool is that? On Phillip Island, just by chance, he joins in the koala dance. And as the sun sets gold and red, the fairy penguins come home to bed. 
Tasmania next, where he finds a spot as crew upon a racing yacht. The wind is strong, the sea is rough. Soon Santa thinks he's had enough. But in Sydney, there is much to do. A skywalk, cruise and opera too. And though the harbour bridge is high, Santa climbs it. What a guy! So he's climbing up the top of the harbour bridge and see that in the background, that's called the Sydney Opera House. His speedos, red and white and tight, give Bondi surfies quite a fright. That would be pretty funny seeing Santa in red and white speedos, wouldn't it? The big waves leave him feeling dizzy. He keeps the lifeguards very busy. But at least he's having a go. He's having lots of fun, look at him. Although he's having so much fun on holiday in the sea and sun, he knows he has to head back north to prepare for December 24th. Christmas Eve, isn't it? He hangs a boomerang on his sleigh, shouts, see you mate, and he's on his way. And though he is very sad to leave, he'll be back in Oz on Christmas Eve. Look at that, Santa. Oh, having a bit of fun, getting pulled along by the reindeer on his surfboard. How cool. Santa's allowed to have a holiday too, and what a great place he's chosen to have a holiday in our country here in Australia. Some of those places I've been, and some of them I'd still love to go. Kids, do you like exploring places like Australia and all other cool places around the world? Kids, I hope you've enjoyed this book. I hope you've had a really good time with this episode. Keep watching, we'll see you on our next episode. Until then, stay keen. And Merry Christmas. G'day kids and grown-ups. If you are loving watching and learning with Aussie, it would be amazing if you could please do me a really big favour and just tell anybody else that you think might enjoy it too. In the meantime, enjoy this brand new episode and as always, stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend G'day kids, Aussie here. Merry Christmas. It's that fun, special time of the year again. So today, we've got a really cool book. This one is called Macca's Christmas Crackers. Let's see what it's all about. It's by Matt Cosgrove. This guy is called Macca. He's an alpaca. He loves to canter and dress up like Santa, because Christmas is here, the best time of year. Do you think it's the best time of year? I do, I love Christmas. Macca often confessed he was Christmas obsessed. He jingled bells and sang Noels. He decked the halls and floors and walls. Stockings were strung. Look, Macca, Al, Hama. That's all Macca's friends, isn't it? And wreaths were hung. Tinsel was tangled and baubles were dangled. Look where he's dangled his baubles. When it came to the tree, not an inch was left free. He scaled new heights with Christmas lights. Let it glow. Ho, ho, ho! But what Macca loved best of the whole Christmas fest was his reason for living, the spirit of giving. Macca loved giving presents out. That was his favourite part of Christmas. Oh goodness, oh my, there was so much to buy. A jet ski for Al, his daredevil pal. Some dumbbells for Hama, that muscle mad llama. Yeah, Hama. For Maxine and Jax, those sax playing yaks who love to be cool in an inflatable pool. That looks fun, doesn't it? Alas for our hero, his savings were zero. He's run out of money. 
Macca was fraught. There were gifts to be bought. I need presents fast. He'd left shopping to last. Al looked at that frown and calmed Macca down. You don't need to spend anything on a friend. You're a real angel, Al. Macca smiled at his pal. Let's make what we can. So their workshop began. And those clever alpacas made their own Christmas crackers. After Christmas dinner, everyone was a winner. Beaming proudly, little Macca gave each friend a cracker. On the count of three, gang, and their crackers went one, two, three. Bang! Owl went flying. Harmer pumped iron. The yaks got all wet. It's the best Christmas yet. Macca sheepishly shrugged. And then they all hugged. The perfect present didn't cost a single cent. That's the perfect present, isn't it? A big hug with those people that you love and your best, best friends. That's a great book. Kids, there's so much to love about Christmas, but giving is Macca's favorite thing and hugging and spending time with his friends and family. Kids, I hope you do lots of that this Christmas and I hope you have a great festive time of year. We'll see you on our next video and until then, stay keen and Merry Christmas. Hey kids, did you have lots of fun today watching Aussie? I hope so. Did you know that we've got a heap of Aussie episodes on our YouTube channel? If you haven't already, go back and have a scroll through. I reckon you'll find some others that you absolutely love. And while you're there, why don't you hit subscribe? That way you won't miss out on any of our new videos that we bring out. We'll see you again soon, kids. Until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend.